Galactic Standard Date Year 11356 Day 95 Soul Standard Date 4th of the 7th 3267 Bassa had just made it back to Rosarian space and was reading another rift to the next players when he got another request to form a mind bridge. He let out an exasperated sigh and slumped over as he connected the bridge. What? Come on, I just left. It's only been like half an hour. What happened now? Aegis clenched his fists, imagining the devastation the cats were facing. The kitties, my lord. They are under attack. It's male. Basilus froze for a second, before a look of pure hatred took over his features. Location, now. Aegis sent over his memories of the spatial coordinates and cut the connection before hurrying onto his tasks. Basilus growled as he created his rift to the planet Purity. Amarath peeked her head over his shoulder and poked his cheek. What's wrong, Bassy? You look like you've just seen mail. Bassus's eye twitched, and he clenched his teeth. He's killing the kitties. Personally, I will kill him again, and this time I might try to seal him the same way he sealed your father. Tentacle bastard can't keep his twisted personality in check. Amram slung her arms around his neck, and brought her head around his shoulders to kiss his cheek. I'll be right there with you, not that you'll need it. Bassus unclenched his jaw and sighed before stepping into the new tear between dimensions. After a few minutes of walking, Bassus noticed that this short trip was taking longer than it should, Normally taking the trip through the veil makes for a quick trip because of the time differences, as well as the fact that it always creates the doors close together for some reason. Yet here they were, still making their way to the battlefield. Amarav, why haven't we made it to the other side yet? Amarav popped her head up. Only thing I could possibly think of is that there's a rift so big that it could block travel just sitting open. If that's the case, well, it'll take us a minute. Once we reach the bubble of influence, we will be back in real time too, so the time spent here won't be any slower. A rift that big would be creating a fairly sizable bubble too. Ambassador sighed before taking off in a magically assisted sprint. It's got to be Thanatos. They made it before us, and they brought a planet that can't fly at will through space. He's going to be standing at the edge of the rift. Guess we just need to go fast. After another 15 minutes of sprinting, Bastus felt himself pass through the genuinely massive bubble of influence. He noticed that Thanatos has actually left the rift, but kept it open for some reason. Then there's the fact that there is a spaceship heading towards the rift as well as himself. He could already feel the hatred of the bean inside the ship. Well, that's a problem. The cat is about to kill himself. He's already even within the Veil Energy, so there's no saving him from what's to come. Because I should at least check on him. Bastos watched the ship as it sailed through the Veil and took a nosedive. After guessing where it was going to land, he ran for the spot so that he could be there to help the little guy however he could. He had predicted mostly correct, as the ship smashed down on the rough and twisted hellscape of the Vale. The ground was not solid enough to completely arrest the momentum of the ship, so it dug a massive trench in the ground as it skidded towards Basilus. The ship finally came to a screeching halt a few feet away from him, and he walked up to where he figured the bridge would be, before stabbing into it with his sword and peeling it with his oversized can opener. The only living Felis inside was sitting in the captain's chair and staring at him with a desperate need, a need for power. The Felis forced his eyes open and struggled to remain conscious as he spoke. I need the Oa, please, before falling unconscious. Bastus crouched into the bridge and walked over to him. He sat down and pulled the cat into his lap before petting her slowly. Amarav, do you think that you could help me with giving him what he seeks? He is luckily compatible, though he will suffer a curse. Amarav hopped off his back and crouched next to Bastus before petting Sylvan as well. Yeah, the poor kid has gone through a lot in the last few hours. I can feel his hatred. I'm sure you can too. I'll see what I can do to influence the Veil for his blessing. I'll need you to supply me with you of your energies as well. Two gods are better than one, after all. Bassus nodded. Very well. Let's start on giving him what he needs, he said, as he set the cat down in between them. Amaranth placed her hands on Sylvan's back, and Bassus grabbed Amaranth's shoulders. She closed her eyes before a black flame flowed from her hands into Sylvan. Bassus took that as his cue, and pale green fire flowed through him into her body. The black flames were outshadowed and became a small point in the center of the now green fires flowing into the Felis. Sylvan's white admiral's dress wear started to twist and color black. The material cracked and took on a stony appearance not unlike Bassus's body, before small spikes erupted from his shoulders and blades formed from his elbows down to his forearms. Sylvan's tan fur turned a deathly gray and his joint's mane turned midnight black, his claws turning to lethal blades, his tail forming a spike on the end. Finally, Amrav touched her forehead to his, transferring some information. Sylvan's eyes shot open to reveal two pure black orbs, lined with glowing pale green blood vessels. Sylvan sat up and took a deep breath before standing and looking down at his transformed body. 
The uniform had mostly melded with his body, and his appearance had completely changed. He had even grown a four foot taller, taking him to four feet tall. Truly a behemoth. He looked down towards Basilus and then to Amrath before he started crying. Amrath walked to Basilus' side, and Sylvan dropped to one knee. My lord and lady, this humble apostle of death and hatred will serve you for eternity. I will have my vengeance against Mael thanks to you. Lady Amaranth has already explained the situation to me and given me the knowledge on how to draw my power. As to my curse, it is but a simple thing, really. I can never again have children nor remove my admiral's uniform. Though this has now become the regalia of your house, so I welcome it. I will spread your names to the stars as I bring vengeance to those hunted and killed before their time. Ambassador smiled at him while he shook his head. As always, worship, but I'm glad you're all right. I really am. Amaranth poked Bassus and whispered to him, he is actually our apostle now. It wasn't some weird worship thing. He draws power straight from us. Because he is getting a palm from two different gods, he doesn't even need a chant to be able to perform a triple the capacity of the Romanus guy. If he decides to utilize a chant, he'd have over ten times the power. He can even train his vessel to have a higher capacity, which would result in a much bigger increase. Vassus cocked an eyebrow at her. Seriously? We just proved up an OP kitty, just like that? Amram smiled and nodded her head happily. Easy peasy. We can even make a few more apostles, given we find prime specimens like Sylvan here. Basilus shook his head. That means that Mael has probably made a few of those apostles as well. So why haven't I ever seen one? Amrav shrugged his shoulders. They are probably either the ones that train his vaulted priests, or they could be the breeders that birth all these monstrosities. Basilus shuddered before waving Sylvan over and walking towards the rift.